Oh boy, I'm up here at the Frederick Harley getting my bike. Listen to this thing, man. Holy crow. I'm gonna get it in a trailer, but they show me now how to actually do this correctly on how to put this in transfer mode. This is crazy. Stay tuned. All right, so what they're saying is you power this on, power it off, and then you hold down the button here in your headlight flash button. Now it's in transfer mode. Okay, but to be able to start the bike back up, if I understood them right, does this thing start back up without it in being transfer mode? Yeah, it does. That's kind of weird. I'm not sure about that. So we're going to try this one more time. So apparently you turn on power, turn off, you go to your high beam switch and your left blinker and apparently there it is so apparently now this thing is in transport mode okay but they were saying when you go to turn it back on you got to take it out of transport mode which i don't get that at all because i just showed you how i just started it uh, who knows it's too damn complicated what a joke why don't you just keep it the old way who knows All right, see here, this like composite material, it's not slick versus those other trailers have that linoleum flooring. That is so stupid. I mean, I just don't get it. Do you get it? I guess everybody's getting their motorcycle license because the other day everybody's riding bikes. I'm assuming everybody's upstairs in the office, the class getting their official motorcycle license. How about that? Pretty cool, this motorcycle trailer really is the perfect setup. This is like a seven by 16 trailer. I mean, if anybody just is really not into hauling cars around, this is like the perfect setup on how you uh, can haul your bikes around. All right, got them all strapped down. Hey, he's got the coolest guy, the guy's driving by here at Frederick Harley Davidson, and he's saying, hey, uh, he's checking out my trailer. How long is it? And I told him how long it is and big. And then he's like, we just got to talking. <laughs> Coolest guy. He's got a bunch of, he's got five motorcycles. His kid's a ranger. So uh, he's going through his schooling. But just a cool guy. Look at this here. So nice of him. They cleaned the bike. They gave it a bath. And we're good to go. Look at this here. I think it's going to be a great ride. Love the exhaust. I love the exhaust. The irony here is Reinhardt exhaust is exhaust that I would not have picked for this bike. I would have gone to Chrome Works again because of my previous generation Harley Davidson CVO Platinum 23 that I bought. And by accident in Florida, the, 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 the basically the service guy highly recommended the Reinhardt's. And I gotta tell you what, the Reinhardt's are the way to go. I'm so disappointed in so many ways that I bought the Chrome Works for my Fast Johnny. I wish I would have bought the Reinhardt's. Pardon me says, Eh, well, I don't know what. Anyways, success in getting the bike, but look at it rain. And here's the, the ramp. And see here, look. So it's wet, and I'm not slipping. On my other um, trailers, there's no way I'd have slipped and fallen on my ass. Oh, wow. So let me get out of here before I buy something, right? The good Lord. So if I want to get that brake out tire fixed, this dealership's position is... They don't patch tires. You gotta buy a new tire. That's gonna be very expensive between buying a new tire and, and, if you hear me, uh, putting it on, putting it off. It, this turned into like a $600 frickin' frackin' uh, bill. Woo! I don't know about that. So I'm gonna have to do some research on that. I mean, in all sincereness, I gotta buy a new tire instead of patching it, so I don't know. Think it through. So here we are, leaving the uh, Frederick Harley Davidson. Got the two bikes, all good to go. So the good news is, got bikes ready to go riding down Tennessee. So yeah, I'd have to honestly say now at this point that that CBST, the problem with that bike was the transport mode. I didn't set it in transport mode, and so if you think it through, I bought that bike in Winchester, Virginia. Then just a short time later, I drive all the way to Florida with it. So it has 
literally a 14, 15 hours of sitting in a trailer going down the road of the basically the bike turning off and on and whatever else is going on. And then you get there in Florida and it's, it's a challenge to start the bike. And then at the end of the day, um, I bring it back home. Same thing. I didn't put it in transport mode correctly. So it ends up being hauled back home for 15, 16 hours. And you wonder why the battery's dead. And then I transport it up here to the Frederick Harley dealer, dealership where it's not in a proper uh, setting. So the story is for the brand new 2024 Harleys, I'm sure most people know that own them, but I didn't know this. It's the left turn signal switch and the high low beam indicator little trigger switch on the left hand side of the handlebar that you hold down at the same time after you turn the bike off and on. So you turn the bike, you, when, you, when the bike's off, you turn it on and then you turn it off and then immediately you grab that left turn signal switch with the high beam trigger switch on the left handlebar. You hold it down and you'll see the lights flash three times. Then you'll see in the meantime an icon of a motorcycle and a pickup bed of a truck that's indicating that, tr that the bike is in the transport mode. So I just learned that and I even had the instructions with me. So there you go. So the bike's battery really wasn't a problem. It was the person that was trailering it was the problem. Yeah, how about that, right? I'm be glad I figured that out because of me going to Tennessee, I get down to Tennessee and be the same story, like the damn bike doesn't run right. And the guys did a whole test on the bike yesterday. They put the bike on a, uh, they basically charged the battery. They checked the uh, battery tender cable and everything checked out good. So there's nothing wrong with the battery. But for me having those Indian motorcycles that had a bunch of bad, I had two Indian motorcycles with bad batteries in them. And I just truly felt that I got a bad batch of batteries. It was the same thing continuing from the Indian brand. And even the uh, Harley guy here said that they did receive a lot of bikes initially that had low batteries where they had to charge all the batteries up because the, uh, they weren't coming from the factory charged up. So there you go. On another adventurous day of the Harley Adventures. As we take them to Tennessee, they get some nice um, Smoky Mountain riding time. How about that idea? To the corners, rainy day, and you know, you just know as well as I do, the rainy days, if you don't really change your driving habits, you just may find yourself somewhere you don't want to be, which means it's off the road. Oof. Wow, right? Listen to this truck. Is this just a really nice ride or what? Listen. I mean, the engine's not struggling. I wonder what my fuel economy is. Because... Oh, wow, look at that. See that? So I just may get a good 12 miles per gallon. That would be pretty cool. So this truck here, I should be able to go to Tennessee in one fill-up. This is like a 44-gallon tank. So if I'm going like 380 miles, I should be fine. I don't know what's going on here. It's a lot of times it's means that I got to stop, which I don't want to be up. There it is. See there? And this truck, on a day like today, hard braking, that back trailer starts to lock up and oof. Starts slowing sideways on you. This type of stuff happens. Anyways, just a really good ride. So I look forward to the F450 and motorcycle trailer pull. Because it's just going to be, I think, really efficient. And uh, versus me taking the, the Ram CRX and pulling it. Which I think the gas mileage is in a suck, but they can't much ride the Ram TRX. So let's let her have a fun time the Ram TRX, right? That's my idea. Oh, just another video. I just like to share my experiences and my information that I find out. You may watch my channel. It's just more about sharing what's going on, and that's what it's all about. That's all I'm doing. And hopefully, somebody gets something from it. Somebody owns a new 2024. Harley may be like, yeah, there you go. I get it now. Because some people never trailer their motorcycle. They just ride it. And they may not trailer it. But one day they may trailer it and they'll remember this conversation. Another thing you should think about is your pin. 
what's your pin on your bike? It's a thing that nobody thinks about for the most part. So if you have a Harley Davidson motorcycle, other bikes too, but Harley Davidson primarily, if you don't have your key fob with you, there's a secret pin that will uh, let you start the bike and operate the bike without having to have the key fob. And so when these motorcycles are delivered to these Harley dealers, each dealer has like their own factory or their own pin that they input to the bike. And if you don't know it that, I think it's a five digit, um, I think it's five digits or six digit pin that you have to have in the bike. If you don't know that code, then you can't start the bike, you're stranded. So if you tell the dealership when you get the bike serviced or when you're buying the bike, if you tell them when they prep the bike to put in a five digit code that you'll remember, then if you don't have your key fob, you can still start the bike. On the Indian motorcycle, it's much easier. The Indian motorcycle, you can go into the screen if you have the, uh, like the Chieftain, the Dark Horse, the more of the bagger bikes, and the screen has it right there in front of you for you to set up your own personal pin. Harley Davidson's bikes usually don't have that. You have to learn how to toggle through the uh, turn switches on the non-bagger full uh, fairing bikes that don't have the infotainment center. You gotta learn how to toggle through your little screen to get your pin numbers to show up, but then it'll bypass the uh, fob that you have to have with you and you can start the bike up. I know it gets complicated, doesn't it? But it's just little things. Once again, if you watch my channel, if you own a Harley Davidson motorcycle, do you know what the pin is if you lose your key? And if you don't, then you better call the dealership where you bought the bike from. And some dealerships write it in the back of the manual they give it to you, they give to you or something. Or call the dealership that's a use they use the same pin number for all bikes. So just some information for everybody out there. One day they're like, oh my gosh. I don't have a key. What do I do now? Yeah. All right. There it is. Got truck a little dirty. What do you expect when you cut grass and drive in the grass, right? So that's it. Stay tuned for the Tennessee trip coming up shortly. Is that today? Tomorrow? I don't know. But anyways, just always like to share my adventures and hope you enjoyed the uh, conversation. Great day and hit subscribe or share the channel. God bless.